Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a rope mat in the shape of an anchor. So here you can see our project for today. A rope mat in anchor form. This is a two-pass version, since it has two cords running through the entire mat. You can also do it in a single pass, for example, or you can even add more passes, three, maybe four. But in my opinion, the two-pass version is ideal. The rope mat is mostly of a decorative nature. You're going to commonly find it in a knot board or perhaps decorating various objects, perhaps a door. Now, the mat itself is not terribly hard to tie. It requires some attention to detail and patience. So with this said, let's take a look at the supplies, then get to tying. The first and only vital supply for this project is going to be cordage. In my case, I'm going to be using some cotton cord, about 1 8 of an inch in diameter, so about 3 millimeters. Now the amount of cord that you're going to need for this project is really going to depend on the number of passes in your mat. So for example a single pass version for this diameter of a cord is going to need about 7 to 7.5 seven feet of rope. This two pass version is going to require double that, so about 14 to 15 feet. The second supply can come in quite handy. So a number of pins and some sort of a surface that you can stick your pins into. So some cardboard, maybe a cork board, anything like that. So this is going to enable us to pin down our mat a little bit, which is going to make it easier to tie. Another useful supply is some duct tape, which we use to secure the ends of our rope to prevent it from fraying or unraveling. And finally, a pair of scissors to cut the ends of our rope. With these supplies ready, let's begin tying. I'm going to start tying by cutting a length of rope and securing both ends using some duct tape. I'm going to fold my rope in half. So this is the middle point. Create a loop, like this, pin it down, like this. Then, using your left hand, create a second loop, like this. Again, pin it down. Like this. With the other end, so the right one, create a third loop. Like this. So basically what we got is three loops and a diamond shape at the center. Continue, folding your right end over the left one like this. And again, the right end over the left. Like this. 
So we have now done the basic setup. We are now going to do the bottom of the anchor. Let's now focus on making the bottom part of the anchor. Take the bottom right strand, pass it over the other strand, then create a loop, like this. Then, using the same strand, pass over under. Like this. Take the other end, pass over to over the loop, then using the end, go under over under. Like this. Take the cement again and go over, under, over. So over, under, and over. And with this, we have completed one side of the bottom of the anchor. To continue, we're going to take this end, so the left one, pass under the other end, and create a loop. Like this. Using the cement, pass under this cord, then travel over under. So like this, we went parallel to the other end and did the opposite. So under, over, under. Take the other end, pass under this first loop, Like this, so under 2. Then over the second loop, like this. Then travel under, over, under. So under, over, under. Finally, we're going to travel through these three chords over, under, over. So over, under, over. And this is the bottom of the anchor completed. Take the seam end and travel on the right side of the first end under over so under over 
We now have the two ends here and we are ready to begin the middle part of the anchor. So we now have the two ends here on the left side. We're going to start with the bottom one, pass over the other end, then under over. This creates a pair of parallel strands which we now split with the other end. Over, under. Take the first end again, travel under, over, under, like this. Take the other end and again split a pair of parallel strands under, over, like this. At this point, the only part that we need to complete is the top part of the anchor. Take the top of the two strands, pass under, over, like this. So under, over, through the left loop. Then, back, under, over, like this. This creates two bytes here on the left side. Now, use the same end to travel parallel to this strand. So we're going to travel under, over, under. So under, over, under. Like this. We now have two parallel strands that we can split. Take the other end, pass over, under, and over. Then, pass over, under, through the right loop, like this. Now, again we have set up two bytes. Take the cement and go over, under, over, Like this. So over, under, over. Then under the other end. Then through the top loop. Over, under. Like this. Then back through the loop. Over, under. Creating a second byte at the top of the anchor. Now place this end next to the other one. So effectively over under. And with this our anchor has been tied. In the next step we're first going to remove the pins.
To continue, what I usually do is re-tighten my anchor one to two times in order to get it to proper shape. So I start at one of the ends and start redistributing the slack in the knot to get a more anchor-like look. So after one pass of tightening, the anchor looks better, but I'm going to add a second turn of tightening. Then we're going to continue. After adjusting your anchor mat, you can finish it up if you're doing a single pass version. At this point, you would cut the two ends and for example, duct tape them together. Or you could join them using a short splice. Now, if you're going to be doing a two-pass version, then take one of the ends and follow the other end through the mat. So like this, you can see that I began doubling up the mat. Once you run out of cord in one end, take the other one and again follow the other end. Basically, we're going to work in both ends into the mat to double it up. At some point, the two ends of your cord are going to meet up and you're going to have a two-pass version of the mat. At this point, you can tape them up together using some duct tape or you can tie them together using a piece of thread. In either case, the joint section doesn't need to be terribly strong since usually the mat is for a decorative purpose. In my case, I took a piece of thread and tied the two ends together using a reef knot. On the top side of the mat, you can't see where the joint section is. It is hidden quite nicely under a section. So guys, that's it for today's video. A rope mat resembling an anchor. 
I hope that you were able to complete this project without too much trouble. Thank you very much for joining me and I do hope to see you next time as well.